Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Little Rockers Radio. I haven't actually done a live or a video for Little Rockers Radio in a while. I'm Sarah and a lot of you probably recognise my friend Mel who has done a lot of interviews with me in the past. This week is National Nutrition Week in Australia from the 14th to the 20th of October. And sadly in Australia, over one in four children are either overweight or obese. The figures a couple of years ago were sitting at 25% and we're now sitting more at 28% of children in Australia are either overweight or obese. So for National Nutrition Week, I wanted to catch up with Mal who has a wealth of knowledge uh, in this area and I guess ask you about about it's more than just those stats isn't it it's almost like a multi-layered problem well I think um, oh it's interesting you bring that up because there's an amazing professor down at Deakin and he runs the global obesity center down there he has some really impactful stats around childhood obesity but what's interesting is he talks about that it's not just one mm. it's not just one influence mm. this is culturally it's community it's every stage of a child's development and who impacts them becomes the problem mm. of um, how they eat and so what i what i did discover that was really impactful in what he's actually taken to some regional areas as a research um, project is he goes to all the leaders of the community who impact at certain mm. stages of that child's development mm. and has them take leadership roles within nutrition and how they connect to food. Yes. And at the end of the day, it's about conscious connection with food. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think also, as you were saying, there's many different facets. And funny enough, although we've got the Nutrition Week this week, it's also um, World Food Day today. And something that correlates with um, diet-related illness in children is also um, food insecurity. Mm. And one in five children go hungry mm. in Australia. So, and then the people that can actually afford food, um, and, and they're, if they're just on that edge of being able to afford food, then their choices of food are minimal. Mm. So their access to food becomes over-processed because it's cheap. It's like the white, fluffy, over-processed food is what they go to because it's cheap and it's yeah. accessible to us. Yeah. But I just think that is so unfair. I mm. think we need to be a country. We've got a country that can actually produce good food. Mm. Why are we... Why are we having one in five children in food insecurity yeah. and then diet related illness mm. when we do have access to fresh produce mm. and mm. we do have access to real food? But I think we've had a disconnect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and that's what I was speaking to you about uh, oh, a couple of days ago, where from our generation growing up, I, I remember clearly growing up and my mum always um, went and bought fresh produce. Mm, same. And interesting enough, there were still neighbours that maybe even had more money than us, mm. but frozen veggies came in. Mm. And frozen veggies were, this is in the 70s, early 70s, and it was the thing, it was like, it was cheap, and people were buying frozen veggies for every meal because it was just like this new craze. But I think that's where the disconnect um, started. It's yeah. like, we don't go to the fruit freezer to mm. get real food. Mm. We, we actually know that we go to the fruit shop. Yes, it's been picked, but it hasn't been processed at mm. all. Mm. And I think that's where we quite often talk about the confusion around food, don't we? Yeah. And the confusion around, and I, and I blame a lot of it on the multinationals that are out yeah, there and the absolutely. way that they process the food and then market the food, which they that's say was <laughs> within guidelines, but... Mm please. Yeah. Um, and there is that real disconnect in terms of the education and the understanding mm. of what is real food and even the price to eat. Yes, real that's food. right. So, well, I mean, you look at our Indigenous communities, we've pushed them out into regional areas and then their access to real food, they can't afford it because mm. the more regional you go, the more expensive food is. Because even in Northeast Victoria, mm. the prices go significantly up by about 
15 to 20 yeah. percent just because it has to travel imagine what people are doing in the central of australia and i just think we can do better mm. for our kids when it costs it'll cost around about 60 billion dollars a year yeah. for food diet related illness this year surely we could be doing something better well surely and i think it needs to start with recognition doesn't it yeah that's from, right not from from you and me yeah. but from the higher levels of government as well that yeah. it is actually an issue within australia and it is a big issue yeah, and the video right. that you refer to with, with steve yeah, yeah is actually really impactful that's in how right he presents that information yeah mm. and I think what's what I did love about it was it was a community engagement coming together and going so there was like the health um, sisters there was teachers there was counselors mm. there was um, the government that they, they were all there taking responsibility of how our children are impacted mm. and then they came up with solutions mm. which I think is fabulous and it comes back to I remember one friend saying to me oh my god they've invented a pill that um, stops obesity and I was like surely you could actually just eat real food yeah. and that might get rid of yeah. obesity yeah. but it's the access at the end of the day yeah. for Australians I believe it's the access to real food mm. absolutely mm. so in this week of um, National Nutrition Week and today yeah. is World Food Day you said yes. um, where all the focus will really be on obesity and our and our um, our epidemic with being overweight and cardiovascular disease I think that we really just wanted to show that it's a much bigger much broader, broader. picture than mm. just focusing on the fact that one in four children are overweight or obese yes that's a massive problem yes it needs to be fixed yes but as Mal said there's one in five children that are going to school who are starving yeah they're not eating properly they're going to school so we think they're okay but they don't actually again have access to proper food yeah um, or real food and then there's the the issues as you go further out with um, access to real food yeah and that all sort of falls under you keep saying the word food insecurity which yeah. is a new word for me but that kind of all falls under to the same banner. Under that same banner and I think what you brought up with um, the multinationals with the marketing um, is we think that to put into our lunchbox it has to be in a packet mm. and I just feel like and it's not about parent guilt at all no. I'm not saying this for people to feel guilty at all of course we're gonna there's gonna be a convenience element to it but at the end of the day when you've got a lunchbox it's as simple as putting two pieces of fruit and some vegetables in and some sort of lunch whether it's a wrap or a sandwich mm. inside their lunchbox mm. with things that aren't over processed it's just real food yeah, yeah. and the thing is also is we've trained our children's tongues to want and crave sugar mm. and we have to unlearn that yeah we it, do. it's not and it's not funny it's not, not funny that you want to give your children sweet stuff I think it's great that they have rewards and yeah. you have a lolly as a reward yeah but I think you need to have food that makes you healthy is impactful nutritionally and so that they can learn and think clearly um, but we've got a lot over us influencing us and I think it's probably time that we just recognize mm. that let's just get back to simplicity yeah and um, and it has got very confusing about food yeah I do understand that and there's lots of diets out there but at the end of the day during the week do the 80 20 rule mm. Eight, like 80 percent of the week let's do well and let's make sure things are just simple and um, if, if you are buying beautiful fruit in season then you get those flavors yeah you do absolutely yeah. yep and and you you are teaching and educating children then about whatever you choose to call it sometimes foods or foods that you don't eat all the time when you do the 80 20 rule and that works quite well yeah yeah, yeah that's right um, so in National Nutrition Week I'd love for you to comment and let us know what you think this the solutions are mm. or what you do in your family um, and I know that Mel has 
is working on her solution at the moment through the GERF market and yes. food insecurities, which um, you've recently launched and a lot of the money from your membership um, through your business goes back into helping to solve a lot of the problems that we've spoken about. So if anyone's interested in any of that sort of thing, I'll pop all of the links below. You can hop on over to Mel's website and check it out. I'd love to hear your feedback on this in National Nutrition Week and on all of the areas that we've covered and what you choose to do um, for your children and their lunch boxes and uh, as for you at home as well. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. for joining me. Thanks, Sarah. Cheers. Bye. Bye.